Hello everyone. In this session, we will get introduced to microprocessors. So, why do we need to study microprocessors? What is a microprocessor? Its proper definition and then types of microprocessors. So, if you, uh, if you observe what uh, any computer system you take, any computer system, the microprocessor is the basic processing element or it is a CPU or core of any computer system. Likewise, like nowadays if you see any communication device or any digital entertainment or portable devices, all the devices are controlled by microprocessor. So, after the introduction of microprocessor, the way we view, analyze and control the world surrounding us over past two decades has totally changed. Microprocessor is considered as a product of combined development, combined developments in the field of computer architecture, and IC fabrication. So, it is a byproduct of the combined developments, the technological advancements in both computer architecture as well as in the IC fabrication. And because of the evolvement in the microprocessor, it made the concept of the personal computing very feasible. So, the, this is the reason a designer or an engineer should know what type of components do he needs whenever he is going for any design and how he, how he can reduce the production cost and the how to improve the product reliability. So, that is the reason we need to learn the microprocessors. So, next we will try to understand the definition of microprocessor. So, first if you take microprocessor, it is a combination of two terms, micro and processor. So, micro means you know that micro is small and the processor means processor processes the numbers. So, what set of numbers? Usually binary numbers. So, binary numbers means zeros and ones. So, or else if I take the computer as some processing element, I give some input and I get the output. So, the input is processed and is given as the output. So, Microprocessor is a combination of two words, micro, small and processor which processes the numbers, specifically binary numbers which are zeros and ones. So, usually this is what an as per the layman definition, but when you have to give a technical definition. So, microprocessor, so few people refer the microprocessor as mu p also. And it is nothing but an integrated chip. Hope you have an idea about the integrated chip. So, usually a chip and pins on the two sides, it is a dual inline package, if it is a dual inline package. And the microprocessor has thousands of transistors on a single chip. That is what is your VLSI technology, very large scale integration. And now when I say it is an integrated chip, so what it is made up of? So it is made up of semiconductor, nothing but your silicon. So usually many students try to mug up the definition of the microprocessor. But if you go, if you try to understand the microprocessor in this way, you will never forget it. For example, if you take a microprocessor, first of all, what is a microprocessor? It is an integrated chip. And what is there in that? Thousands of transistors. 
and what it is made up of semiconductor material silicon if i have to properly give a definition of the microprocessor the microprocessor is a semiconductor ic manufactured using vlsi technique it includes alu register array and control unit so microprocessor is a semiconductor ic manufactured using the very large scale integration technique and what it has alu alu is nothing but arithmetic logic unit which is a main processing element register array a group of registers and the control circuit in order to generate the control signals like memory read memory write i o read and i o write if i tr try to keep them in an uh, block diagram format so i have alu register array control circuit so this forms my this forms my microprocessor alu register array and control circuit now how do the alu register array and the control circuit communicate with each other talk to each other so using the buses so these buses are address bus so bus is nothing but connecting wires a group of connecting wires address bus i have data bus and control bus so address bus is nothing but nothing but which carries the address and data bus which carries the data and control bus which carries the control information like as i already told memory read memory write i o read i o write etc now all the components in the microprocessor are connected to these three buses so using the buses the information or the communication between these blocks are done this block the entire block diagram we can also name it as or we can also say it as what are the like the components of microprocessor so these are what the components of a microprocessor and next we'll try to understand the types of microprocessors so types of microprocessors now we can uh, classify the processors by the size and then application wise so application is nothing but in what purpose we are using it and the speed and bus width few textbooks also give it as bandwidth size as per the size application and speed and bus width so size when i talk about the size so 4 bit microprocessors 8 bit microprocessor 16 bit microprocessors 
32 bit microprocessors 64 bit microprocessors so like this based on the size based on the number of bits we classify the microprocessors and going with the application so is it a specific processor or a special processor or is it a general purpose processor or microcontroller so first for example your special purpose uh, processes for example they are used for your weather forecasting and for the digital signal processing algorithms or your dsp processors for research and at space stations these are the specific processors or special processors and then we have the general purpose nothing but your desktops and microcontrollers you know it is a like a, a more application specific microcontrollers are more application specific and they are also called as true computers anyhow this will do it again in the microcontroller section and coming to the speed so usually the clocks based on the what is the clock given so is it megahertz or is it gigahertz clock frequency usually we require the clock to trigger any operation in a microprocessor so it may be a megahertz or a gigahertz and depending upon the clock you give the speed of the microprocessor depends and bus width or your bandwidth like uh, we have it as a CISC processor and a RISC processor. CISC is nothing but complex instruction set computer and RISC is reduced instruction set computer. So this is about the introduction of microprocessors. Now if I have to talk about the inventor of the microprocessor or we can also say it as a father of microprocessor the one name which immediately comes is your Marcian E. Hoff Marcian E. Hoff is the inventor of the microprocessor so let's revise what we have done so in our introduction we have seen why we have to study the microprocessor so because microprocessor is a core of any computer and maybe a communication device digital entertainment or any portable devices are controlled by microprocessor any engineer or any devisor any design engineer should be able to know the components of the microprocessor how to program it how to design a reliable and an efficient product going with the definition of the microprocessor microprocessor is nothing but your micro small and it processes the binary numbers technically microprocessor is a integrated chip consisting of thousands of transistors made up of semiconductor usually silicon the proper definition is the microprocessor is a semiconductor ic manufactured using vlsi technique and it includes the alu registered array and control circuit as shown in the diagram and the next is the types of microprocessor so based on the size based on the data bus width and based on the application and on speed and bandwidth and going with the inventor of the microprocessor Marcian E. Hoff is the inventor of microprocessor thank you